Good evening and welcome to Back Chat. I'm your host, Tama Madima. This evening we're chatting to Nigel Amos, uh, 800 meter sensation from Botswana, one of the world's uh, greatest 800 meter runners. He is with us this evening. Uh, it is a Thursday. I hope you guys are excited for this one. So let's uh, have an athletics feast, guys. Amos is going to be with us in a bit. And then we're going to have a good chat. Hope you guys are ready. Good evening and welcome to Back Chat. I'm your host, Temba Madima, powered by Backtrack Sports. Yes, sir. And wow, episode number 83. Can you believe it? Um, yeah, we've been going for a while. And uh, hopefully we can keep going until 100 and more. So welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining in. It's always a pleasure having a chat with everybody. Chris Arons, I see you. I see Nigel Almost is here. I'm going to quickly just send him a request. And then we're gonna go live. Oh, I see you, uh, Tanelda Kitia. Welcome, our oh, Kurnia Frederick Cornell, Emil Peterson. Welcome to you as well. Hey, Mr. Amos. What's up, brother? How are you doing today? What's good? What's good? Are you good? I'm in one piece, bro. One piece. <laughs> That's what you want to hear, champ. As long as you're in one piece, you know we are happy. <laughs> but to be one piece, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. I know last week you had a bit of uh, challenges, uh, but you immediately said, hey, let's reschedule, let's do it uh, properly, you know. And yeah. yeah, really, really grateful that you're here. No, man, I appreciate you being able to schedule me again. This is backtrack, man. This is uh, uh, <laughs> almost, which is one of the leading countries to take our athletics up there, to be honest. I started running the Yellow Pages for me to get away. So this is our platform. So always yeah. have opportunity. The blessing absolutely and you know i was even when i was talking to makwala i was even speaking to big daddy all the way in botswana and i'm like hey he's like hey you, 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 why are you taking us our, our our botswana guys are making them south african but we are one you know we are one there's no, <laughs> there's no way <laughs> and i hear you you're in south africa for the next uh, few months just preparing uh, for 2021 yeah, man, I'm back to the roots. I'm back to, to Pitori, <laughs> where I got my first medal training, and, you know, just chasing back again, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, you know, I remember when you when you rocked up to South Africa the first time, uh, the whole Botswana squad was at, at the HPC there, and, I mean, you were still a, a young boy. I mean, that time, well, we'll get to that, Amos. You didn't know much about athletics. Uh, you were just a boy from Botswana, you know. But we'll talk about that. But it farms, I don't say from Botswana. Do farms in Botswana. <laughs> louder. Make that thing. From the farms, you know. <laughs> from the farms. The rural, rural, rural. Make, make that clear. <laughs> All right. Um, so what do you want to do? I'm going to first do an introduction. Obviously, uh, the people who are joining in here, we want them to know exactly who's uh, here. So we'll do an introduction. And then once we do an introduction, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get started with the rest of the questions. All right. Sounds good, brother. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Ish, this man doesn't actually need an introduction, but we have to do an introduction. Uh, with yeah, us, uh, we've got Nigel. I don't know if he still goes by the, by the nickname Zorro. Uh, <laughs> uh, Amos, uh, he is the Olympic Games silver medalist in the 800 meter, World Continental Cup 800 meter gold medalist, World Under-20 Championship 800-meter gold medalist. Two-time African Championships 800-meter gold medalist. He's the All-African Games 800-meter gold medalist. Commonwealth Games 800-meter gold medalist. World University Games 800-meter gold medalist. Third fastest man ever over the 800-meter, as well as the World Under-20 800-meter record holder. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Come on, yo. Get on your feet and let's give him a warm welcome. It's Nigel Amos. <laughs> In a journey, eh? When you say all those, then that's when you like, I've crossed so much lines, yeah? Hey, 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 hey. Even the things, I'm sure some of the things you had already forgotten about them, you know, but hey. Exactly. Yo, that, you... feels like that line across the, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, it's amazing what you've achieved. And that's why it's such an honor to have you here, man, because your Africa is one of Africa's best ever 800-meter runners, one of the world's best ever. I mean, third 
of all time and you did this while you were I mean that time when you clocked you were still a junior I, I had Andre Ulifir with us here on Tuesday and he was telling me some interesting stories and we'll get to that as well <laughs> <laughs> I hope you but, tell me long, and I hope you didn't say much. Hey, yeah, 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 I will get. That's why I was watching it. <laughs> yeah, he shared some interesting stories. Uh, but before we get into that, we have to play a game. It's called Thirty Seconds. Very important. You're on back chat. Mm, okay. Want to see? Want to see how sharp uh, your mind is? We know it's off season and you are resting now, uh, but we'll just test you a bit. <laughs> Go right. So the game is 30 seconds. It's very easy. What's in the bag? Yeah. You have 30 seconds to name as many things as possible that you have inside of your competition bag. The record is 19. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, I have a water I have a water bottle. Two, I have one test bike and I have my change notes. That's it. Four things. Light as you can. It's wide. You just carry the tools you need. <laughs> Why you Hello, you're going to confuse yourself. Get what you need to use at that point, use it, come back. <laughs> so just for That's the most important thing, checklist. That the second as <laughs> most important for. <laughs> hey, you 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 pack like Renard van Rensburg. Renard van Rensburg also uh, packed uh, just four things. I think another middle distance athlete four things and that's your time. Uh, so you're sitting at uh, you you tied at the bottom with Renard van Rensburg on four. <laughs> <laughs> two laps boys two laps boys yeah two laps boys up <laughs> we have really great memories with him you know yeah yeah all right yeah. let's get started so obviously oh my brother you've got such an amazing uh, story and such an amazing journey and i think one of the most important things i wanted to get across on this chat you know that we want to have here is is yeah. the story of Nigel Amos i mean people might see you at olympic games even when they saw you in olympic games 2012 they thought They didn't know where you come from. They don't know where this journey started. They don't know. They don't have the miracle for a, a, a boy like you to get there and take home yeah. a silver medal, first ever medal for Botswana. Tell us yeah. wh 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 who is Nigel Amos. Where did your journey start, and where did you discover athletics? Uh, you know, uh, I said I spent most of my times as a child doing playing soccer. That's where I grew up. And for me, uh, the most important thing was a competition soccer because you were playing for me every day. You know, yeah, yeah that's why. Grew up in a family where there's none boys. We'll create a team, and then we'll the money we win, we'll buy a packet of soup, and that's for dinner for the family. So you know, as mm. grow up in that area of like sport, you go to win, you go to deliver, go to work together as a team. Yeah. So, and then um, as I grow, get to senior level in 2010, um, I met a guy called Mr. Mafefe, and then he's like, "Look, man, uh, I think he could be good in track." I yeah. said, "No, I'm a good player in soccer." Is he sitting now? We're talking. I have 29 games, 33 goals. So that's Aye, a good yeah, 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 yeah. It's like <laughs> key striker, like, number one knocks man. You see, so and then I was like, one day I was like, oh, let me let let me just get this guy off my back and show him I'm not good enough. I gave it a try. It has competition. I won, and that year I went on to be third in the world. Um, I mean, the African Junior in Kaburoni, you know. And then that's when I guess the ship started to keep on rowing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, it's amazing. So. Obviously, the, the, those were the early days. Former uh, soccer player, uh, number one striker, and you know, you know, it, 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 and people don't realize what a difficult decision it is. I mean, at that point, I mean, the zebras, the, the Botswana soccer team, is more popular than any runner in Botswana. You know, so for you to choose running is not it was not the the the, the, the obvious choice. Yeah. But there are situations in between, you know. It's, it's an African culture. You raised up in a situation where as a young boy, as a boy child, you, you always have to be old and take care of your sisters and take care of your family. Mm -hmm. So, be as my father wanted to change the situation in the family and everything. And in soccer, we are 11 of us, my men. We all motivated by different things, driven by different yeah. passions. So I could put my 100% work, and the next guy puts 75, the next guy puts 50. Yeah. For me, what I want to achieve and the goal, track I guess. Once I get on it, to see the light, it was my first ticket to it. And then uh, I managed to get a seat in a long time in that seat. And so I'm still here with you, sitting at the world number one. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So obviously you say you, you got a taste at junior level. And then let's talk about um, you come to, you guys come to uh, South Africa. Uh, yeah. I remember very well, 2012, uh, eight. It's a big year, and I mean, if you think about it, it's already eight years ago. You know, you were still—I mean, 
<laughs> you were still a young, 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 young boy. I mean, you're still young now. If you look at 800 meter and when athletes usually peak and so on, I mean, you're only 26 years old, uh, which means, I mean, you, you are very young. I mean, most of the guys peak from 28 up to 33 even, you know? So yeah. it, it goes to show there's still a lot in the tank. And um, well, then, you, should, you should know that it's our track is as, as loose place is unique for everybody. You could perform at 18 and doesn't perform at 29. You could perform, you know, you could run your best at 40. So our sport doesn't have that. This is the peak for the game. Everybody, yeah. really you know, so. But yeah, you are right. I'm keeping on to the wave. I'm keeping on working on it and see if I could. You know, because your record was broken in my eyes. I was second that race. I was in action. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was in action. I'm changing gears. Not like I was, I saw the bus passing by, I'd be like, that must be 16. No, I was in there. So I'll, 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 I'll love to be too. You know, that'd be a good feeling. Whew. Yeah, no. Now we, we'll, be, we'll be watching and hoping. And, you know, I mean, you know, when, when an African stands on the line mm. there, we support uh, each other. And, I mean, Botswana, like I said, you guys are like our, you're our next door neighbor, you know? So, 2012, you come to South Africa. You guys obviously came with a mission. I've seen now Botswana, when you guys go on camps, when you move, you move as a team, you move as a unit, and there's a plan and there's a goal. I mean, just tell us about it here. You came into South Africa 2012 uh, for that uh, camp of yours. What was your PB at the time before you came to, to South Africa? Do you remember? Yeah, I had 146.21. I had an Olympic B standard, you know, so that's how I got selected to be in there. Uh, pre-camp Olympic uh, preliminary team. And then when I got here, I was given opportunity to train and given races to race to, to try to get to the A-level, you know. So that was the set of the camp. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, uh, the camp I played, it's, it, it's part because when you, as soon as you left uh, Mzanzi and you went to uh, World Juniors, I mean, there was the beginning of, 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 of a lot of great things, you know. Tell us about that. So obviously, was this your first like international competition uh, running at world junior level? Or did you have, oh. uh, you said, I said, you mentioned Africa, but I mean, out, outside of Africa, was did you have any other international experience? Did, yeah, you know, I did the world youth junior. I was seven oh, yeah? in the world youth junior. So I got blessed to be able to do the world youth junior. I was seven and then uh, world junior one. Yeah. So I keep the transaction going to be able to cross the line in the world win senior. Then I'll have, really have a great taste in every stage in this creature that so yeah uh, uh, that was in my my first competition but that was me trying to attempt to get to to the to the olympics but i really yeah. qualified yeah i had my own slice of peace 18 i know i'm gonna get to the world junior and enjoy that you know so uh we were given team left to germany and given six races in all of the six races i did one for two one one for six two one i think in one of the races i raised it in germany and uh, <laughs> Thing. And Samuel was a pacer. I remember I get there, see Samuel, I'm like, I didn't know anything about the pacer. I just stayed on Samuel, my man. I didn't want to let the guy. <laughs> <laughs> so after that race, I had one more race left. You know, after that race was like one more race left, Nigel. If you don't get an Olympic qualification, then on the flight back home, wait hey. for your world time. Or if you do, and that you're on the flight going to the Olympics. You know, so you... Yo, yo, yo. That so, came in. And it was like... So I gave all. Yo, Follow the so people. now... Let's talk about that race, that last, your last race uh, to yeah. qualify now. What's yeah. going on in your mind? Uh, is there, is there, what's going on in your mind? Hey, you know, like you got one more chance. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, after that, you go and you, you bring back a silver. So what's going on in your mind, Nigel, at that point? I got to that race, you know, I was the slowest in the race. You know, you check the start list, it's just, okay, I'm the slowest in the race. So I had stay at the back, I stay anyway. These guys are going to still kick me that fast than me. So let me just put myself in front, behind Pacer. Why did the Pacer, Pacer went out 600, last 200, I did 143, 11. That was the second fastest time. All oh, then uh, behind Rodisha with 143, 10. So then I was like, oh, new national record. Okay, now I'm here. I'm qualified for the Olympics. All those comes in now, you know, you look forward to, to, the, to the next step and, and see potential what you could do. But... For me, I never wanted to rush into the journey. That's why I never raised the African champion. From there, there was African champion, but I never did 800 because that year, my goal was to get to the world junior and really do well, you know? Yeah. So, coaches and everyone understood that, okay, we need to keep him in his line and keep him where he needs to go and to the world junior. The uh, African champion, I only did relay. So, went on to the world junior, crossed the line, winning the world junior. Our goal of the year was, was achieved, you know? So, when I go to the Olympic, it's just like, already I have my goal of the year. Ah, okay. You know, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. interesting, man. You know, hey, you know, that's why we need these back chats, these 
behind the scene uh, stories this big door stories uh, from uh, from super striker to uh, super olympian you know we need to hear these things you know and i mean it's it's amazing i would have never known i mean where, where do you find this in the books you know unless you from as uh, uh, follow every interview so it, it's it's good i think a lot of people are learning and yeah man so obviously world juniors you go there you deliver the medal for uh, for botswana uh, talk about that Uh, you, you mentioned um, at the World Youth, you were there, you finished, you were a finalist, uh, yeah. you finished uh, seventh, and then to go from there to winning the gold, explain that feeling. Obviously, the, there are bigger moments, but I mean, that's a big moment for a junior athlete, you know? Yeah. I think now I was, when I get to the junior, I was already having a year got into athletics, you know? You should mm. remember, for me, that, that transition that happened quickly for me to win athletics, years and been olympic podium you know which is after years never finished in any podium you know so it's yeah. a lot of happen between like why this guy was in podium in 18 but never finished in any podium but still be the world fastest still run the fastest still win the diamond league why never get to the podium so mm. those all as was coming to the table and the transition that i needed to figure out and really understand my way and that i'll be able to come back to my very best again mm. yeah big journey big big journey yeah. and i mean uh, 2019 was a, was a, was an interesting year i mean we saw i mean from to to, to run those times i mean you, you were showing a lot i mean over the past uh, take away this year with obviously the the covid but i mean 2019 yeah. 2018 you were knocking the whole time low uh, 142s and then uh, running the 141 um you know again you know after all the all, all those challenges i mean It's been a, a difficult journey. If, if many have followed and those who support you will have seen yeah. that uh, at championships um, over the recent years, you've been struggling with injuries and all these uh, many things that, you know, it's, it's difficult. It's, it's not easy. Um, yeah. how, how have you kept motivated and focused? Because I can, I can tell you're still hungry for more. There's way more that you, you're hungry for, you know? I think, you know, when you're in that journey, as you say, people always know you could do this, could do this, and you could always could do it. Uh, what I respect in the journey to understand is that you could be in the room and doesn't be able to tell people how it feels. We've been yeah. in the room. That I started to talk to people who've been in that sport where I've been, people like Kasta. She's been there in the sport. She's been walked that journey. She's been wearing that shoes. She's just on yeah. the call. You could, you know? So I'm into this. I started to talk to people like Mo and also that you, you know, I had, I had, I had, I had to learn and, and understand that, okay, it's a journey and be patient with my own journey and see that actually maybe I got the result before I could work for it. At 18 hours in the line, I won Olympic medal and now <laughs> I can't even break 143 again, you know? So you, it's kind of like now I'm putting on the work for the, the results I already got, you know? You pay for mm. what you already got. So <laughs> it's again, you know? It's reversed. The, the clock reversed for you, eh? I, I had that one, unfortunately, my man. I got injured after that and everything that was supposed to happen on the journey to win the Olympic. It happened on the journey after winning the Olympic. So I got right. that other way to work around it and see how I could make it best out of it. <laughs> hey, this life thing is interesting. Eh? It's interesting. <laughs> But I mean, I, I, I like, I can hear from, from what you say, you know, there's a lot of uh, patience that you've had to, uh, uh, that you've had to add. Uh, you've had to, listen to a lot of uh, advice and you know have yeah. have your peers who can be mentors as well to say hey listen uh, relax you know you're one of the best in the world you don't there's no pressure on you uh, yeah. just do your thing do your thing nigel <laughs> amos <laughs> uh, so the, the, the next question i want to ask so obviously um, this one is i mean it's, it's probably one of the, the the most important questions and we're going to get to the olympics i know people are going to be like ah you can't leave the olympics already We'll get yeah. back to the Olympics. Um, what what is what is your your motivation? I know you mentioned a lot of a lot of it in the beginning. You know, raised in a family where there's uh, you know other nine other siblings. Is it nine? You said right. And uh, being in a place where you have to you 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 already feel like you need to take care of them and also take care of yourself. What is your yeah. motivation? You know, into becoming, I mean, one of the the best eight hundred meters top three already. You know what I mean? Uh, What, what has been your motivation? I think it's I, I look, the, the position I was when I grew up in the family, I looked into it a positive way. Look, I was given this. This is my motivation. I yeah. can't fail. If I fail, uh, uh, there's so much back that I'm losing. There's so much weight that I can't lose in the back. There's so much people that I can't. So 
you, you, you look at it into a different angle and it's grow up achieving all the sacrifices of leaving home at 17 and uh, still not yet back home now and I have a five year old. I only see my daughter for like six months for his five for her five years old, you know. It's, so yeah. now all these sacrifices put all those sacrifices and you appreciate them. You just wanna see more of that results. You wanna get that result done. You know, you wanna achieve that thing. So I mm. think that's what drives me. No, yeah. Absolutely. I mean you know, I mean this question I've asked it a few times to a few athletes, but I mean after what you said, I think it's it's important to to, to understand the question because the question is saying uh, the question is you know, how much of athletics, how much of your life does athletics consume? I don't think people realize, you know, they see you running diamond leagues and world champs <laughs> and all these things. And it looks like it's a nice life. You know, it's just, yeah, you just all you have to do is run. But uh, like you said, a lot of sacrifices. Just explain how much of your life it consumes. It's a, uh, it's people, if people are, people are not being part of the journey. They see the result. They see me for the one minute foot five in the TV. And they're done. That's whatever they heard about me. That's what they think about me, whatever happened. There. But you see, the whole nine months, whole 12 months, whole four years you've been working for, for the <laughs> we have to go to, I mean, to, another, to another year again, putting on the work. They don't see that work. They don't see those nights. They don't see anything. For them, they see you on the screen, you're crossing the line. That was great. They don't see those times you're, you're on your knees and you're throwing up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Let us see all those things you go to, like, you know, get upset with the coach and be like, you know what, I'm not going to do this. He asks you, let's <laughs> come back for it, you know. So it's, it's a lot behind that people doesn't see that we're going through a lot. Of it. And as athletes, you get to be in a, in, a, in a own room box a little bit, you know, you feel like, you know what, I just want to keep going doing this. And then if, when we, we get to a point where now we're hitting the ceiling with our mentality, getting, dropping it, we crash, you know. We, we, we feel like we got to match our results with our lifestyle. For me, what I learned, a separate athlete and, and the person. And I always say, you're a crazy boy. I always say to them, if there's no crazy Nigel, they won't be the good athlete. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but separate all those things and just move on like them with that, you know. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's interesting because, I mean... <laughs> You know, besides the athlete, I mean, there's there's the whole Nigel Amos outside of uh, tech and field, you know, and uh, <laughs> it's, 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 that's the reality of it. You know, you don't just run, you don't just run, you know, there's a whole other side of Amos as well. Um, yeah. So I think, yeah, that, that's a very, what you said there is so important because, you know, I don't think people always understand, you know, because like you said, they'll see of your, of your life, they'll probably see Less than five percent of it, you on TV running a race, and then the rest is back to the drawing board. Drawing and I'll tell board. you one thing very interesting about this: they say, "Yo, oh, athlete travels; they see the world." Oh God, we only see the airport, the stadium, and, and the hotel. Three things we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yeah, hey, that's the truth. That's the truth. Eh? They think it, they think it's a holiday. No, no, man. You're always on the move. Get in race next. Get in. <laughs> Almost, I'm going to take a few questions here. I see uh, uh, there's comments and questions. So let me take some of those. Uh, we're going to leave the people out. Uh, I see Petit Photographer says, I like your way of communicating, Amos. Uh, we've got Siddharth. I think that's somebody. From, is that, uh, I don't know, somewhere in the, in the world saying hello. We've got Emil Peterson says, Nigel Amos, the only person in the world who can jump head first. In an ice bath. <laughs> hey, you, you're not afraid of the ice bath. No, you got to give the mentally the side pass. I had to take it because <laughs> I'm about to gonna send. So let me just send it direct. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't oh, like yeah, I, yeah. Those kind of depends that you sacrifice. That things that people doesn't see. You know, you do things that you don't enjoy, but you know the results. What you need, you got to go through those. You know, <laughs> recovery. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I see higher than the ceiling says, show DJ Zorro. DJ Zorro. Hey, we'll talk about it. Let's talk about it while we're on it. Where, where did yeah. this uh, DJ Zorro uh, uh, start? You know, where did, when did you fall in love with the, you know, people don't know that side of where you, 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 you love music, DJing. Yeah. I, I don't know. You don't do it as much now. I don't know if you're DJing in America or what. Uh, no, but, I, I have a good enough price money. I'll come private. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what where did that start? 
see what happened with DJ Zora. She remember I came in the scene at 18 year old, I won an Olympic medal. The next day I was 2013, I was supposed to come back. That was my first world championship in Moscow. And then that year I got injured in the varsity cup in UG. I was running 400, you know. Hey. So and that injury took me out the whole year. So I had, I remember sitting down watching the race and the world. I think it was won by our man with 144. I knew I could have fought for the power, you know. Hey, and that, yeah. Boy, you know, only now, uh, physical injured, you are mentally getting there too. You are killing yourself. So that's when I picked up music and then just put my mind, I put my, my choice on it. And then I bounced back in 2014. I won every race I lined up on into. So it's, it was a journey. So that's again, I always tell people, without Zoro, there wouldn't be that ship that crossed Jordan to the other side of the world. <laughs> <laughs> the athlete to the other side. So it's, it's just the journey. That's the genuine appreciate it and move on with it. Shout out to DJ Zorro. Yeah, maybe we must do it. We'll do some uh, uh, some bookings on a private uh, a sector for, for, for DJ Zorro. We've got some more questions here. Uh, I see Sean Coin, um, OCN Coin is asking, How do you fuel yourself for training? Uh, do you have a strict diet or do you eat everything around you? Are you a Hoover or do you select uh, what you eat? I'm lucky one thing, I don't eat much. I don't have a good appetite, you know. So okay. I'm um, to strike. I make sure that I wake up. Uh, for the past three years, I changed a lot. I used to just wake up, go for training, and doesn't finish session, doesn't really understand why I don't finish my session. So mm -hmm. once I moved to Oregon and all those, I had to have a, those people around me, my team helped me, my nutrition team and the team and coach helped me around. And coach one day asked me one morning, do you have a breakfast before come to session? And I was like, no. It's like, maybe try to finish sessions. And then yeah. I started to and also I started to get into a, a better I, I've said the past three years of my life I've been eating better ever so probably that's why I produce 141 again you know so, Ma, 141 <laughs> exactly you know uh, I, I mean that's interesting and I mean I think it, it, it's been very obvious you know and I, I've got that was one of the questions I wanted to ask about um, obviously you train in South Africa you, first you, you were training in, in Botswana correct and then you you, 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 you came to South Africa we you trained with uh, Jean Fester. I mean, you guys were a very strong group, uh, Andre Olifir, and as well as many other athletes. I mean, Samuel Sipem was there as, and other athletes uh, in the group. Uh, Woy, I mean, Woy Emil, Woy Henku, and them are also here. Um, and then to, let's talk about the journey here in South Africa. So w w what made you move from training at home in Botswana, uh, coming to train in South Africa, and then the transition to Oregon, because you can see every part of the journey has uh, it's got an amazing story to, to who you are today, you know? Yeah. But, uh, I think, you know, in Botswana, I was still in college, you know, so once I finished college, I had to go to university, so uh, automatically when I was got admitted to North Coast University, I had to translate and come to Pochistrom. And then okay. the, why we choose to come to Pochistrom and North University, that I, I had I would have opportunity to train with a group that was a military group, and they were guys. So I yeah. came in that's why I stayed in there for the past four years for one, one an Olympic cycle. You know, it was 20 top Olympic cycle to 2016 Olympic cycle. So after 2016 Olympic cycle, we sat down, we did the evaluation, we see what I could do best. I was always running fast all these years in Pouch. I could deliver any race, I'm on lake, I win, I run 142s, you know. But now I wanted something different, something to yeah. win you know, so, uh, and with Coach Mark, with Oregon, he always showed that we always win championship. He's a championship coach, and yeah. I wanted to, you know, I worked to, for me to be able to sustain, to come back, hit same final, final look, delivery, which is what I was making. That's why you could ask me, why you're not being on session? I'll tell you that. I didn't have the capability to show up the next day and do the same thing again, you know? So now mm. getting the look around that, okay, how could we work around with his own bodies, on B10 injuries and all those. So I think I need a change of environment mentality, you know, because all these years I was always B10, not getting the championship medal. So I think that was, uh, after Rio and across the line, I was like, I guess this is the time, and yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. I think it's it was a, it was a, it was a good uh, transition. I mean, uh, for for you. I mean, like you said, you trained well in your cycle year in South Africa, and then the new chapter in Oregon. I think uh, it, it's already been showing. You, I, I can already see. I think those who are watching and supporting can see this the structure uh, of your life in uh, at, at Oregon. Uh, yeah. In America is, is is much different. I know the Americans they they they, they handle middle distance way different <laughs> than we do here in Africa. Uh, yeah. So talk about those changes. I mean, besides you, you said you've got a team that's working on your diet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What's the biggest difference? I've always wondered, like, if what's the biggest difference between being a middle distance runner in America versus a middle distance runner in Africa? I know in Africa we train hard. Eh? In Africa you must just train hard. Yeah, uh, what are they doing different that side? <laughs> 
talking hard to my friend. <laughs> no, guys, I tell you this. Uh, I think I started church just two more sessions. When I, when I moved to America, I couldn't finish a mile in a session. Let's give an example that I couldn't finish a mile. I couldn't do anything more than 800 in terms of sessions. So when I get there, I realized, look, you've got the speed. You've always been running on foot trips, but you need the mileage to be able to come back. And so now I started to be introduced to the mass. I started to be introduced to more 1,500 workouts. And working around it was working best for me. I kind of designed a program that is specific for me, that worked for me. And looking at the goal, because you wanted to be great in the 2020 Olympics. So which we started 2017 when I joined the team. I did 143 in 2018. I did 142, 2019, I did 141. So we were looking forward to the Olympics to see, because this has been a foundation that we're building. We're looking forward to see the shape of the building taking. Uh, it's yeah. called, called, uh, hey, I don't know. We, we, are, uh, we are excited, uh, Chief uh, Zoro. Zoro, we, we are excited. Uh, we, we, we are waiting to see what 2021 is going to produce. And I mean, it's exactly that. I think. You know, if I think, especially because of your, your, your soccer background, which means you were doing yeah. up and down, eh? you can't score goals without running. Uh, yeah. so, so that has been your, your, your foundation from day one. So I think uh, the system there is also working again for you because now you, are, you have to run. You can't just do a 400. Uh, you must do more. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man, you know, and people just, you know, at least they'll be like, you're running 800 days. They're like, why are you training for five hours? Why are you doing this? <laughs> Mileage. Then until you do it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Mileage. All right. Um, I, I want to move on now. I think there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a few more questions that I want to ask. I mean, there's important stuff about your foundation. I want to talk about. Yeah. So let's let's wrap up the, the 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 main main running things. I'll take a few questions as well. Uh, I yeah. see here Lawson Roan saying, uh, "Hey, uh, happy to see you, Nigel." We've got Matrick Miller saying, Nigel, my bro. Uh, yes. Welcome to you guys. We've got Kevin Cabron from Brazil. Uh, hello, Brazil. Uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, so so, the, so the, the question I want to ask now is Olympics. Né? There's never been a Botswanian who has won a medal at the Olympic Games. Yeah. You're still a junior. At that point, did, did, you, did you capture everything that was happening or for you was it just a matter of i just want to go there i want to run i'm already world junior champion like you said i have no pressure yeah. Yeah. How, how how was that was it that moment as big as it was for botswana or did it, or did it only hit you when you got oh. back home or hey i'm a no, hero for, for me as i said i just want to get the olympics and just enjoy the games and just the yeah, yeah. and the moment, actually, I'll tell you, I started to appreciate what I did when I was 18 in 2015, what I did. Sometimes you realize the value of the moment after yeah, a long yeah. time. Yeah. So, yeah. When I was now put on the work, trying to get that championship, man, I tend to get that job. I look back and now I realize the value of the thing. So I think for me, it was that kind of thing, that moment that I realized the value after a while, you know. So, yeah. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. I think, you know, like Andre said it, he says, you know, when you get into a, a big situation and it's your first time, you know, and like you say, it's like you, you just, you're ready, but there's no pressure on you because it's, it's, it's new, you know, and I mean, it's, it's exactly that. I mean, for you, you said three years later, you're able to say, hey, you know, hey, that medal was not easy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's, that's so interesting to hear. Okay, let, let's move on to the next question. Obviously now, I mean, you've matured. I mean, you're still young, 26 years old. Um, yeah. And you, you've started, uh, there's a foundation uh, yeah. that you've started as well, uh, Nigel Amos Foundation. Talk about it. Uh, where does that come from? And, uh, you know, what made you decide that, you know what, this is something that I want to do and uh, I want to give back, obviously? I think because well, uh, of where I was growing up, you know, for me, uh, as I said, I'm one of the guys who I really was raised by the community. I stayed in different houses around in my village because you couldn't have enough space at home, you know, my grandmother gave So, as you say, the vision of the mission of the foundation is to uplift the community that is uplifted, the nation that is uplifted. Everyone's vision, everyone's desires will be found. So, we, that it comes from that. I think that's come from that. And now we wanted to create a platform that will help more people, all of us will help share and drive each other ideas and help each other achieve our goals, you know, and find peace and happiness. That's all we're looking for, you know? Yeah. Uh, Simple. I, I, yeah. I see Mr. Uh, Mr. Ma Makwala. Hey, I have to, I can't uh, not, uh, hey, Mr. Isaac Makwala is in the <laughs> building, ladies and gentlemen. The bad man. Champ. The champ. Champ. Hey. He's in the building. Shout out to him. 
man, he showed you that was a piece of bread. Where's my dessert? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, no? uh, so here's another comment, uh, Nigel. He says, uh, who's this world championships will be in his hometown in America in 2022. Is he looking forward to that? Yeah. I, or must we start? Must we start with that's, Olympics first, and then we'll we'll see that later. That's one thing I'm excited about in my career to be able to raise the world championship title in a place I called home, in a place where I can't get back to my level best playing into. You know, it's a it's a lovely community. I'm excited the athletes will get to race in front of the community. That not only supporting the athletes but the women being the people that makes the sport. So man, the world is coming home. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, thanks for that one. Who is it's, it's live in E major. Uh, thanks yeah. for that. That is a good uh, good comment. A uh, big heads up for that. Yeah, I see uh, free free. Uh, what is it? Freeze Inc. SA saying twenty six years. They don't believe it, champ. Uh, you know you've been uh, doing such amazing things. People are shocked you're still this young. because <laughs> oh, they at a young age. You know, I came in yeah. eighteen, and a lot of them that, that they're no longer there. You see, I'm still the only guy from the twenty twelve race that is still racing now. You see, only I still stayed up. For me, I had a good consistency. I kept my consistency. I kept on showing up when I had to. So, yeah, so there's some people like, okay, this guy, I I, first time I heard his name, I was still in primary school. I still hear him now. He must be old. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like what you mentioned, you say you're the only, you're the last man standing. You know, hey, that race ended people's careers, man. Uh, it was fast. It was fast. Oh, man, it's a historical race, man. It's a unique historical. race. It's we were, we were blessed to see that in our lifetime. I always say, you know, I was blessed to line up that kind of race in my lifetime and I push my body limit and see where I could end. I was in a structure for, for like, in a month. So I was, uh, I was lifeless for an hour after that race. But you, you get out there with a different mindset. You approach life with a different mindset, you know. So that race helped us grow, not only as athletes, but too, you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I can't imagine the lactic that was driving in your bodies. I'm sure that lactic was changing gears. You know, lactic, lactic, eh? lactic. But I'll tell you, the most lactic I felt was in Zurich last year, the final. Oh, God. Oh. That last time that I was feeling like the stadium lights are going off every step. It's getting dark. <laughs> Never felt that kind of lactic, so I was like, God, mm -mm, this is tough. Mm. <laughs> Yo, yeah. You know, like 800 is not like the, you know, you look at 100 meter, you look at the 200. Those guys finish their races and they're still able to stand there and talk. Hey, this oh, man, we, we run it some. No, oh, it's, 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 and people argue about it. We shouldn't argue about it, say 800 is the toughest race. We shouldn't argue about something like that. You know, There's no argument. No, yes, we appreciate our junior races 400 and our stepper races 1500, but look, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you ladies and gentlemen, you heard it straight. 800 meter, guys. Toughest event on the track. Oh, Nigel Amo says that with a 141, you better believe it. You better believe it. Uh, Nigel, uh, one more question. I want to ask uh, role models. Did you have any role models uh, when you started athletics or do you have one now, somebody that you look up to to say, uh, this guy motivates me, I want to be more like him? I think, you know, in, one thing, in 2012, before we, uh, I've always been just running, keeping things going as a young boy, you know, being my own role model. God started to open in the door. You wake up in the bed. If you didn't get out of the bed today, you would be sitting here talking to me. So the first role model was yourself the moment you stepped out of that bed and walked away. So that's yeah. what I always kept. So when I met the guys in the race that I was doing competing, which other guys like Rodisha, they build the, that, that, that bond, they show out that this is the sport, but you got to enjoy it. I'll tell you, these people doesn't know. At the home up before the 800 final, he came to me and told me that he's going to go hard. So I already knew that Rodisha is going to go. I had to butter my bread nicely. I had to go with my own pace. So, you know, that... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get that love still get that at that level of sport. That shows how much beautiful it is. <laughs> hey, sh shout out to Rodisha. Yeah, no. I like what you said. You know, you have to butter your bread uh, uh, properly. You can't just go there and hey, it's, it's dangerous. Uh, yeah. But I mean, shout out to him. I mean, Rudisha. I think that what I respect about him, you know, is that as much as he he was, he's the world's greatest. Uh, he's got the record, you know. So we'll, we'll call him the world's greatest. Um, yeah. 
he, he was he was never afraid to pull everybody with him you know for him to come and tell you to say hey listen i'm going to go hard you know and that just goes to show that hey my man if you want to come you must come <laughs> that thing takes an arm and a leg my man <laughs> <laughs> I remember in 20, 2017 World Champ, you know, I always been underdog, right? I always getting a race, there's Rhodesia. I just think the race I win. He's, he's, I don't know, he's defending. I'm an underdog. I'm never expected to win the race. So yeah. in 2017, after the World Championship, I was got to be beaten. I'm the favorite. Man, to be in that spot, it's different. Difficult, eh? Got to have those. That physically, I was ready for the spot. Mentally, I wasn't ready for the spot. So it's mm. difficult. and that's why I said that's what they conservation with people who have been in that sport who have been there how did you manage to handle how did you manage to pass through this you know so mm. that's what yeah wow man that's such a big uh, that's a big uh, statement you made there you know and i mean i don't think uh people i don't think we always realize i mean how much sometimes you you know it, it's easy to to get there like you said as an underdog nobody's uh, looking out for you but hey when when you're carrying <laughs> that weight uh, it's a different 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 story but <laughs> that first lap you know that you have eight men 13 men behind you that you know, hungry lions hungry but your mind got out of that you got to be in your own zone and control yourself and run your own race so i think it takes a lot mentally to be able to get in that spot and be able to execute it really well and achieve it now so i give a lot of respect to rich i always look at that race and say you know that has courage even there in the olympic level there are some you know yeah yeah no i uh, see we got uh, gigetti 79 all the way from uh, italy saying hi amos uh, welcome italy italy in the building uh yeah. we've got a, we've got a, a bit of everybody here um amos i think we're going to wrap it up let me see if there's another there's so many questions i won't be able to take all of them um someone asking about your diet but we talked about that and uh, so on so my brother i mean yo it's such an honor to have you here and i think let's wrap it up um sure. let's first before we wrap it up i want you to just give a message there's a lot of people that obviously support you uh that are still backing you every time you line up you know you get yeah. those die hard supporters eh? and i know yeah. most of them are, are your family in botswana and then you've got them all over the world you know hey man you you'll be surprised how many people love you and want to see you run fast because end of the day What makes athletics interesting is times and when you clocked 141 again last year you know the 800 community is like yeah you know we're back you know the excitement yeah. is back so yeah. what message do you have for for those people man i appreciate that prayers for me i appreciate yeah. that pray- uh, uh my grandmother was said to me you you look son you know the way you are because of your prayers maybe someone out there then not pray for you so no i appreciate those prayers and uh, I'm put mm-hmm. on the way you know that love and support is motivation that keeps us going you know it's that energy that keeps going behind the all the time they don't see me one minute on the tv <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely my brother uh, i just want to thank you thank you so much for joining us this evening uh, it's it's been an honor it's been a pleasure uh, thanks for joining us on back chat uh, we appreciate the love we get from botswana uh, shout out to isaac makwala who is watching a uh, shout out to big daddy who's always you know calling us to botswana hey, temba you need to come to botswana we we're having this okay. invitational meeting you know uh, hey, shout hey, out to you that's on the calendar my man be coming to botswana like it or not you guys are coming <laughs> so got to be nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know we you know as, as long as it's in it's a, it's at home for us we don't mind you know we'll come to botswana botswana's next door but yeah thanks a lot thanks for being such a good a uh, role model you know and for fighting you know people don't realize how much work you put in but i hope today they can understand that it sacrifices yes you are very talented almost you are probably one of the most talented well, I'm, the most, like, i'm not the most talented oh, you have never seen me <laughs> as people have seen me do sessions they'll tell you this guy stays lifeless you know you put all the work <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, i i believe you're talented you know obviously you do work hard i don't want to take a whole never take that away from you but the combination of those two things your motivation your hunger Let's, and your desire it makes you a this. champion i was given this grace yeah the grace the grace thanks a lot brother i uh, appreciate it we'll have uh, this chat again uh, 2020 uh, 2021 uh, around uh, october september we'll uh, we'll call you back and we'll be talking about big things that be that be or not 
doesn't matter. We want you okay. back. No, 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 I'm gonna bring. I'm in the Tokyo one. I'm gonna bring it. I'll bring it. It's still brand new. It's shiny, so I'll bring it. <laughs> yeah, please. And you and you must you must carry it here yeah, when you're chatting. You know, it must be around the neck while I'll we're bring talking. It. Yeah, 2020. <laughs> I'll bring it here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want to hear. But thanks a lot, Amos. Uh, we appreciate it. Thanks to everybody who joined in this evening. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for supporting. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, we'll be back again next week for episode number 84. It's always good having chats with the athletes. I hope you guys learned something. Amos, my brother, thanks a lot. Yeah. I don't know how to say bye in event. I would be saying so. You know, you're my brother. <laughs> you can just say Nda. Nda. Now she tell my daughter, she's trying to teach me Venda. I can't just get it. She speaks Venda. So she's no, we'll arrange. I'll, I'll come have some, uh, some, some. Uh, we'll have lunch or supper there at HPC, and then I'll, 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 I'll fill you in. Robert. The tips, no, man. Sure, sure. <laughs> Take care, brother. <laughs> Good night, guys. Thanks for watching. See you guys again next week on Monday. Take care.